What's going on, everybody? I hope that you are excited to be here. I am pumped up to be here. In fact, the topic that we're talking about today, I think is going to be a topic that is going to change some of the ways that we navigate our friendships. And so before we start today, why don't we go ahead and pray and just thank Jesus for this opportunity that we have together. Let's pray. Jesus, we just want to say thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And I pray that over the next few moments that you open up our spiritual ears to hear what it is that you desire us to hear. We know that you've got healthy friendships out there for us. You've got healthy relationships out there for us. And all we want to do is we just want to live them uh, in a pleasing way that brings glory and honor to you. And I pray, Lord, that through the next few moments, we just take some truths, apply them to our lives so that we can live the abundant life that you have for us. In your name we pray. All God's people said, amen. All right. Today, what I want to do is I want to talk about the importance of friendships, the importance of friendships. How many of you agree that friendships can either build you up or friendships can tear you down, right? We would all agree that it can happen on both sides. Recently, I was at a wedding and everybody that I talked to, they were just incredible people. They were so fun to talk to. They actually expressed real, genuine interest in hearing my story, where I was from, how I got linked up with the bride and groom. It was just incredible. And the thought that I had was this, how in the world did all of these amazing people gather together in the same place at the same time? And then I took a look at the bride and, the bride and groom and I realized, oh, it's because the bride and groom have actually surrounded themselves with great people and they've established great friendships and they know where they're at with those friendships. And so when we're talking about friendships, there are a few things that the Bible says that are gonna be key for us in establishing friendships and knowing how those friendships actually work in our lives. Proverbs chapter 13, 20, it says this, whoever walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Another translation says it like this, be friends with those who are wise and you will become wise. Choose fools to be your friends and you will have trouble. And I think that many of us have had that opportunity throughout life where we've We've chosen a friend and it hasn't quite been the right friend, right? And it's led us into some trouble. And so the Bible is spot on when it comes to establishing good friendships with wise people. The basic idea that I want to talk about today is this. We need to intentionally choose who we hang out with because that will determine our destiny. Kevin Eikenberry said it like this. He said, look carefully at the, clo the closest associations in your life, for that is the direction that your life is headed. Another pastor by the name of Craig Rochelle, who's been around for a while and has a dynamic church, he said it like this. He said, show me your friends and I will show you your future. He said, you are the average of your five closest friends. And he says, your friends are in fact your future. And so listen, if some of you aren't real pleased with the way that, that, that your life is going right now, it might be that you might just need some new friends. What I want you to do is I want you to take a minute and I want you to write down the five closest friends that you have. Write them down. Now, they can't be family. They need to be the five closest friends that you have. And I want you to look at those names because those are people that you're becoming more and more like. And so when you identify your friends, it's important to remember that you're actually seeing the future you. Here are a few ways that we're going to be able to be sure that we're rolling with wise friendships. All right, here we go. Number one, carefully select and share your life with two or three spiritually wise people. Two or three spiritually wise people. What this is known as is it's known as your circle of intimacy. Those two or three wise spiritual people are people that you hold real close because there's something different about them. There's something you realize that's inside of them that you need to be a part of. There's something that, that's in them that, that you want to be like. Those two or three spiritually close people, choose two or three, keep them close to your life. That's called your spiritual, uh, your circle of intimacy. In Proverbs 18.24, it says this, a man of many companions will come to ruin I would rather have two or three close, spiritually uh, mature people in my life than two or three hundred acquaintances, right? That's what Proverbs 18.24 is saying. Proverbs 12.26 says this, a righteous choose carefully their friendships. Now, 
I love people. I love being around people. I love talking to people. I love talking with people. I just love people, right? But one thing I do is I choose my friends carefully. I don't just uh, choose people at, at face value to be my friends, right? Because I've done that in the past and here's what I've learned. Sometimes I've put myself in some really awkward situations by choosing the wrong friend, right? And it takes you through a season of, I didn't see that coming, but you navigate through it and you realize I'm never gonna do that again, right? So we need to choose our friends carefully. A great example of someone who actually chose a great circle of intimacy is Jesus. So we know that Jesus had 12 disciples and of those 12, he had three that he allowed to be part of his circle of intimacy. It was Peter, James, and John. And when we look through scripture, we see that Peter, James, and John were with Jesus in moments when the other 12 were not there. For example, when Jesus went to heal Jer Jairus's daughter, when when she was dead and he entered the home, who was with him? Peter, James, and John. When Jesus showed himself to be God in the flesh and he did the, the transfiguration on the mountain, who was with him? Peter, James, and John. They were extremely close to Jesus and the reason why was because he intentionally chose Peter, James, and John to be with him in his circle of intimacy. He saw something in them. He saw something that he wanted to give them. He wanted them to be close to him and he wanted to be close to them. That's his circle of intimacy. And they experienced a lot of things that the other disciples didn't experience. In fact, I think about one of the moments when Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross and uh, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he was, he, was, he was mentally in anguish and he was sorrowful and he was saddened. And who did he take with him? He took Peter, James, and John. Who is your circle of intimacy? Who are those two to three spiritually wise people that you allow to be in your life on an intimate level? Because listen, if you wanna be spiritually wise, you need to have spiritually wise influences. You need to have spiritually wise intimacy, a circle of intimacy so that you become spiritually wise. Number two, open your life to a spiritually healthy circle of influence. A spiritually healthy circle of influence. So now let's look at the 12, right? So you've got the nine other disciples and then some women that Jesus was actually friends with and he had a great relationship with. What was that? That was his circle of influence. It wasn't his circle of intimacy. It was a circle of influence. He was still friends and had great relationships, but they were just in a different circle than Peter, James, and John. Proverbs 27, 17, it says it like this. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So let's take a close look at what a spiritually healthy circle of influence actually consists of. Here we go. A spiritually healthy circle of influence has a sincere longing for the Lord's presence in their lives. Jesus chose to open his life to nine other disciples and other relationships with some of the women that we read about in scripture because he wanted to have a healthy circle of influence. He wanted to speak into their lives. He, he had a desire to have a presence in their life so he could influence them to be all that he created them to be. Who's in your circle of influence? Who are you working with as iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another? There are many times also in your circle of influence when you might be called at times to influence them and not necessarily have them influence you. Now, many times it's a sharpening process. One sharpens another and a circle of influence is healthy that way. But here's a note that I wrote down when it came to my circle of influence. I wrote this down for myself. I need to make sure that I keep myself in check because my circle of influence is counting on me being a good, healthy circle of influence in their lives. I also need to make sure that my circle of influence is keeping themselves in check because I'm counting on them being a healthy circle of influence in my life. You see how that works? If it's gonna be as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another, we need to make sure that we keep ourselves in check inside of our circle of influence. Because sometimes what can happen is someone inside of our circle of influence 
may have kind of relaxed on keeping themselves in check every once in a while. And that's when we kick in and we build them back up and we help them get built back up. Or it might be that sometimes we need our circle of influence to speak into our lives when we're not keeping ourselves in check to build us back up and make sure that we are in fact being all that God designed us to be. Jesus had a healthy circle of influence with the other nine and some of the women that we read about in scripture. A spiritually healthy circle of influence hears the word of God and they hold on to it. They don't just let the word of God go in one ear and out the other, right? They're not just the nominal uh, Sunday and Wednesday uh, people that come, listen, but just kind of decide if they want to take the word of God for real or not, right? They're not those people. A spiritually healthy circle of influence hear the word of God and they hold on to it. And so make sure that inside your circle of influence, some of the other friendships and relationships that you have on this planet, other than your circle of intimacy, make sure that they treasure discovering the word of God and how it applies to their life. A spiritually healthy circle of influence values prayer and invests in their walk with Christ. You know what I love more than anything? I love being around other believers uh, and other friends of mine that really when we're driving down the road or we're going to an event or we're going out to dinner or whatever, we're actually talking about the things of God naturally and it doesn't feel like it's a forced conversation. I love it when you're able to talk with someone else who's actually just speaking out of their overflow on what God has done in their life, right? It's because they value their time with God. They invest in their time with God. They spend time both speaking to God and receiving from God. That is a spiritually healthy circle of influence. Those are the people that we want to have close in our lives every day because let's face it, this life is not always the most simple life that we live, right? There's things that we face that are difficult. And when we have a spiritually healthy circle of influence that value prayer and invest in God, that hear and hold on to the word of God, and that are sincere uh, in longing for the presence of the Lord, that's how we get through this life together and become better and sharper and, and really honestly become more of who God desires us to be. We've been given one life. Let's live it well and let's, let's live it wise. A spiritually healthy circle of influence develops deep roots and they bear fruit. Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 through 7 says there, this, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. We always want to make sure that our circle of influence is bearing Christ-like fruit, right? I think about it right now, I've got a ton of friends in ministry, I've got a ton of friends that uh, I've started churches with, uh, and I gotta be honest with you, like, I'm so thankful that I'm rolling with people that understand the value of bearing Christ-like fruit, because what we've seen is we've seen people's lives transformed, not just in the United States, but all around the world. And it's because of a spiritually healthy circle of influence. So who is in your spiritually healthy circle of influence? Some of you right now might be saying, you know what, to be honest with you, I don't really have anyone in my spiritually healthy circle of influence. So the question is, how in the world do I develop a spiritually healthy circle of influence? Here's the answer. All that means is that you need to make new friends. <laughs> there you go. That's all it means. And I know some of you are sitting there going, I really don't make friends very easily. I get it. So here's what it's gonna take. It's gonna, it's gonna take a bold step of faith to actually introduce yourself to some other people and be intentional about developing good relationships and friendships with spiritually healthy people. Where do you find them? Well, you find them right here. That's, that's one place, because around you, if you're sitting in a group, there's spiritually healthy people right there that you become friends with, right? You find them at church. I mean, maybe it's been a while since you've actually gone to church. Quit, look, quit watching the video, go to church, go to a place where there's a much better preacher. Trust me, they're out there. I mean, honestly, right? <laughs> but you just need to go somewhere new and, and meet someone new and just say, hi, my name is, and make sure that you develop a spiritually healthy circle of influence. Number three, let the Holy Spirit direct you to invest in broken people far from God. Let the Holy Spirit direct direct you to invest in broken people far from God. 
This is known as your circle of concern. So you've got your circle of intimacy, those two or three spiritually healthy people that you keep close to your life. You've got your circle of influence, which is those other spiritually healthy people that you surround yourself with. And then you've got your circle of concern. And here's who the circle of concern are. They're people who are far away from God. They don't know Jesus. They need someone to tell them about Jesus. It might be people inside your own home. It might be people inside of your neighborhood. It might be people in your city, your state, your nation, or your world. Listen, develop a circle of concern. So the question you ask yourself today is this, who am I praying with or talking with about Jesus today? That's your spiritual, that's your circle of concern. Those are the people that are like, I'm concerned about their life, so I'm gonna invest in them. And here's what I've noticed. You can't be friends with your circle of concern all the time. And the reason why is because when you actually start capitalizing on a circle of concern, sharing your faith, praying with, with people, it actually gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And your job and your responsibility in that situation is not to be their friend, but rather be a spiritual guide, helping them take one step closer to Jesus every single day. That's your spiritual responsibility. That's your circle of concern. Proverbs 11:30 said this. It says, "He who wins souls is wise." Jesus had a heart of concern to help everyone that he could move closer to God. Do you? And these are questions that I have to ask myself every single day. Hey, who am I going to share my faith with today? Because I have a concern for somebody. Who is it? Who do I need to stop, slow down, and have a conversation with today that I know is far from God and just needs to hear a little bit of hope come from the gospel? Well, who is that? These are people in your circle of concern. Maybe it's your neighbors. Start there. And honestly, maybe it's even your family members that are living inside the four walls of your home. Start there. That's the most important. But develop a circle of concern. Matthew chapter 9, 36, it says it like this. When he saw the crowds... He had compassion on them. Who are you currently, who, sorry. He had compassion on them and he recognized that they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I lost my train of thought right there for a minute because a golf ball just about hit me in the face. Came in, <laughs> seriously, like it was right there. You just about witnessed me being knocked out on camera. So let me read that again. Matthew nine thirty six. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus had a circle of concern every single day. He was looking out for those people who were like sheep without a shepherd, and he wanted to be the one that would draw them closer to God. There you go. We talked about friendships with having a circle of intimacy, a spiritually healthy circle of influence, and a circle of concern. I hope that helps you with uh, your friendship development and identifying even where some people are in your life right now. And maybe, maybe you need a bigger circle on, on one of those three areas. Focus on somebody intentionally and bring them in the, into your life and keep them in the right circles. Let's pray. Jesus, we just want to say thank you that uh, we were able to take a few minutes and study your word. Thank you that that golf ball did not come and hit me in the face and knock me out uh, because that would have been really terrifying for everybody who would be watching this right now. I uh, love you, and thank you for this time. We look forward to another time next week. Amen. Psalms chapter 67, verses 1 and 2, our blessing verse that we say every week so that you know you leave with the blessing of God in your life. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that his way may be known on earth, his saving power among all nations. God bless. We'll see you next week.